Welcome to another episode of the Art Workshop. I'm Christopher Epling. We thank you so much for tuning in to Pike TV today. Uh, we have an ink tutorial session that we're going to um, look at today. We're going to consider different types of inking styles and um, have a couple reference books. If you can see all the material I have in front of me, uh, this is things that I've brought in for us to, uh, to look at. Um, I think each one of these um, items in, uh, is important. Um, if, you, if you are interested in trying ink out as a medium, um, then today's workshop is for you. Now we've covered ink in the past. We've talked about inking. We've talked about different um, styles. Um, we've even talked about cross hatching, which is a method of applying the ink. But this is special in the sense that we're actually going to build something from the ground up uh, using ink in block styles. So ink can be used in different ways. Um, you can actually reduce from ink, so that means you can draw, or I'm sorry, paint in, in, in large surfaces with ink and then actually pull from that, you could put white out or white down on top of that, and you reduce areas and you actually draw in reverse. So instead of adding lines to something, you actually are pulling lines away. I know that sounds a little confusing, but we'll talk about it here shortly. Um, I want to cover a few materials before we get started, and uh, I think we'll go ahead and do that. Now, this is a book that I've brought in. Um, it's, it's a book of a collection of uh, Jack Kirby. Now, Jack Kirby is an artist that that was uh, very influential in comics in general. His work is, is um, lo looked at as being uh, the forefront of where comics um, eventually uh, moved towards. Now, if you think of all the comic magazine, um, movies that are out there today, all the Marvel and, and DC stuff, um, all of that was influenced through this original work and this original style from Jack Kirby. Now, of course, there's others, Will Eisner, a few more, but we're looking at Kirby today for a reason. If you notice these heavy dark inks that he's applied to his pages. Now these are all photocopied um, pages of the original work that he produced. And today we're looking at this. I'm going to shut the book for a second though. We're going to look at supplies and we're going to show you basically what, what you need to, in order to produce work such as, such as this. So first and foremost you need ink. Now I know those of you who wear glasses or you may wear uh, contacts, you've probably seen uh, these before. It's a contact lens holder. Um, but what I've done is I've actually changed this into a transportable ink carrier. So if you're actually on the go and you need ink, you can fill that up with ink and then tighten the lid up and it's easily uh, transported wherever you want to go. So we're going to be using ink, of course. That's the first and foremost uh, tool for today. Different types of ink are out there. Um, you can research those a little bit on your own if you want and you can find out what it's used for. Now, we also have another type of ink. This is white ink. Uh, white ink, of course, is used for mistakes. It's really hard to erase ink. So, um, in, fact, in fact, you can't. But what you can do is you can, you can reduce it or you can actually eliminate it by painting over top of it. Now, you don't need any of this fancy ink that, um, you know, that is sold in art stores and supply stores. Really, all you need is white out. Um, so if you have any white out at home, you could pull that. Um, any felt markers that you have at home, you could use that for inking. The ink that I have today is used with a brush. So... This is um, a Japanese type whiteout. It's called Posca. Uh, this is used in the uh, comics industry a whole lot to correct mistakes. And we'll be looking at that actually in Jack Kirby's work in a minute where he's made mistakes and we could see actually where he's corrected that. Now as for tools for today in, in our drawing tools, um, I'm going to be using a brush in order to um, put together today's art um, lesson. You do not need a brush if you have, a, like I said, a felt tip marker at home, a Sharpie, that will be fine. This is like a Sharpie, except this has two points to it. Um, so you just have something that you can plot ink towards. Now I'm also going to be using a fine tip ink pen for the outline work. And here in a little bit we'll be speed through drawing the outline and then we'll focus on inking later. Now they have also uh, created a brush pens we've covered before, which has a refillable a uh, reservoir of ink inside of the uh, actual handle. Uh, those are available for purchase too in different art supply stores. And then I have another felt tip pen which is a very thin tip on it. Uh, this is for fine detail and we'll cover that in a second as well. Uh, pencils, you um, really today, um, 
Um, don't need a pencil because I'm going to be showing you the inking style over top of something I've already put together. So if you want to put this together on your own, you could try these in, in different ways and different methods by just drawing something then inking around it as, as I'm going to do today. Of course we need an eraser for erasing our pencil lines once we're finished. Now with all that in mind, let's take a look at some of Jack Kirby's early work. Um, we see that Jack Kirby has made mistakes. Now this is all photocopied references of his work. Um, so this is the, the unpolished version for print, as they say. So looking at Jack Kirby's earlier work, this is all unpolished pages, as we said earlier. You could see that in some of these pages he's made mistakes, and he's used whiteout to compensate for that. If you look close here between these rocks, you might be able to see the white. It may be a little difficult to pull out from, from the, on screen, but I'll try to find another page. It's a little better example here. Um, these are all, like I said, un unpolished pages, so this is the pages that Kirby would actually send in uh, in order to uh, uh, be printed. So we have white out around the top for the lettering here that he's used. Um, other examples a little earlier on in his work um, around the borders for getting the lines a little straight, more straight you could say, and um, polishing that up. Um, he he um, used a lot here and he's even made notes or annotations, but white out is, is absolutely essential when inking. You, you need it because mistakes are going to be made, um, uh, different things that you need to rearrange or pull out or, or change over. Here's actually a lot of white out work you can see around the top of the, of the man's head here and along these edges. So um, what makes Kirby's style so unique though is, is his heavy, um, heavy inking styles. Um, Kirby was really influential with, with the way he would position and put together a page for a comic. So you see these panels, how they flow. Well, Kirby started to break free from this form. He would use these uh, panels in different ways. He would reshape them, different sizes. Um, here's some wide out uh, again on, on some of these pages here. But Kirby's influences really uh, extend all the way to modern, modern day and current times with, with the cartoonists working in the field today. His work was very detailed, shadow was very heavy, and it, and it almost references film noir, which is a type of, um, it's a type of look that film go for, and, and usually in mystery or in a, um, a crime um, movies, or this, this heavy shadow work where, where the shadow is almost, uh, almost a character in the story. Uh, shadow usually makes the reader or viewer feel a little, um, you know, n not so secure. It, it, there's some danger elements, unknown, uh, suspense, mystery, those sorts of things. So it adds to the experience of reading or watching a movie when you have this, uh, this effect going on. So Kirby did that for comics, though. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to be looking at this style, this heavy shadow work. And I've actually went ahead and penciled together an example that we're going to be using, um, which is here. Now, I, I'm not sure if you can, you can see this really well, but you can tell that's Batman and, and here's Robin. Um, I've penciled this in already, and what we're going to do, we're going to actually speed, speed draw through the outline portion of this. So this is actually the part where I'm going to be drawing the borders from which inside I will apply all the heavy ink, okay? So let's go ahead now and, and uh, actually work through the outlining process. It looks like I've already uh, finished up with uh, the process of outlining here. I know that goes by sort of fast. If you're watching from home or trying to follow along, um, well, you can, but I, you'd have to move sort of fast, I know. But this is an inking uh, portion tutorial, so and what I'm doing now is just blocking out more of the areas that I want to keep white. So all these areas you see that are blocked out, it's almost like the paint by number. Um, if you remember paint by numbers, uh, it's sort of like that in a way because all of these sections have color or they, I'm sorry, have ink or don't have ink. So now we're actually going to start applying these heavy lines and I'm going to open up my contact lens case here full of uh, good old Pelican ink and uh, we're going to start to absorb some ink in here. So, so now all of this section that you see um, is going to be black. This is all of the uh, the heavy, heavy shadow areas, and you can see this is um, just applying the ink down pretty heavily through here. 
And um, I have a reference piece down at the bottom, if you could see that. That's what I'm going to be looking at as we move forward. I'm going to be pulling um, the ink up across the drawing. This is the time where you don't have to worry too much about, you know, um, being, being completely uh, perfectionist with where you're laying down your ink. But when you get down to these sections here where the white should come through, that's where you're going to want to take your time a little bit. Um, this is a large area to ink here, which is going down his shoulder, Batman's shoulder, and across his back. So uh, what I may do is actually, as we continue forward, uh, speed draw through filling in just this back section here. That way you can focus with me and uh, watch more of the detail around the eyes. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go ahead and ink the larger sections to, uh, in order to save some time in a second. So that's what I'm doing now. Well, I know that went by really fast, but um, it's important to get all this dark area in so you're able to see sort of more of the more important, I guess, uh, aspect of this. All of this was just coloring in the ink. So basically I went over inside of the lines or the outline that I've already put down. And I'm applying the ink down heavy. This paper that I've chosen or selected to bring in today probably was not the best choice in terms of... Um, applying ink or a wet medium down on this paper because this paper actually absorbs ink at a fast rate. So the amount of ink it took to actually ink this section was almost half of what I had actually with me. Uh, if this had been a vellum paper, which is smooth surface, that wouldn't have happened. But it's okay, we pushed forward and we made it through it. And now we're at this point. Now you can see at the bottom, I'm referencing this as, as something to go by. Um, because for this tutorial, um, sometimes you can get lost in your own, in your own space on the, on the page. So you could be actually inking in something and you'll forget, well, this is actually supposed to be, you know, a, an area where light is coming in or being um, um, applied to the page. So what I'm doing now, I'm going in in fine detail and I'm going to start to clean up what I've created. Now, this version of Batman actually has the ink coming over to the chin line. And that's what we're going to work on right now. The shadow actually comes in, so all of this area here, and I know at home you're probably like, what are you doing, you're messing this up, but no, actually this is going to um, just add more shadow to the piece. So we're actually going to be darking in all of this section here. All of this is going to be dark. It's gonna look like I'm totally messing up my, my drawing, and who knows, maybe I am, but um, we're gonna push forward and try to get this effect. So going down the nose, you can imagine everywhere that there is light, we want to keep white. Everywhere that shadow comes in, we want to apply ink to that section. And that's what we're doing now. And you can see, since we've come out of the uh, fast edit mode, uh, that this is really absorbing this ink. All right. So we're going to apply this ink down. We're going to come over the sections that have shadow. And you can see how I've blocked out that area. That area is is not going to be shadowed in, okay? So we come down the chin line. The type of brush you use makes a big difference too. Um, brushes come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, and and um, even even thickness of the line of the brush itself. If you're going to do any type of ink work, you probably want to select a brush that that is not very um, very thick, and you want to select one that's rounded. So that gives you the ability to um, go across and make very tight lines, which is what we're trying to do right now. Now the shadow actually comes down the face here, and then it comes down this chin line. So that's what we're doing now. We're following this chin line down. Okay, Robin over here to the to the left um, has shadow going across the back side of his uh, uniform, and then down the side of his face as well. So we're going to try to apply that too while we're here today so you can see how that looks so this comes up now this will all be shadowed in as well now hopefully once I do this it looks it looks right <laughs> um, it's really I always get nervous applying heavy shadow across certain areas like before I started applying this I really liked the look of Batman there that I had going on now that I'm actually going in and putting this detail in I'm just hoping and praying that when I'm finished 
it looks something similar to my reference piece that I'm looking at. Okay, let's keep on applying this down so that we can get it nice and filled in all through here. Uh, this version of Batman has a lot of shadow, and that's what we're trying to pull across right now. Okay, um, if you're at home and you're applying this, let's say you've sketched out a, a figure and you're trying to um, apply ink to it, we have a tutorial that, that we've created, and it's one of the past episodes of the art workshop where we talk about lighting. That's super important whenever you're creating a piece, when you think about where your lighting will be. And an easy way to think about that is, is, is to um, think about it in terms of shadowing, right? So if you have a round circle or a ball and you apply light to that, the backside, whatever part of, part of the ball is not facing the light is going to have the most shadow. So you think about what we call your light source with, with the drawing. And in this particular example we're using today, the light source for this will probably be coming from over here, right? So the parts of this is being shadowed in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over it and I'm going to really focus in on the detail, the fine detail portions of the drawing. There's some parts of this that have shadow that I don't want to apply with this brush. I actually want to apply with the felt pen and that's going to come in just a minute. But this is the portion of the of the uh, tutorial where we're going back and we're tightening up some of these areas, okay? It's starting to look okay, but we still have a lot of work to do. This eye over here requires shadow. Once you start actually going back over, if you make a mistake, you can use white ink or white out to correct that mistake. But I always try to go ahead and get it right because applying that later on really, uh, really can be uh, troublesome because some inks do not take uh, any type of application of any white, um, white out or white paint on top of it at all very well. In fact, it, some, some just absolutely um, will not accept it. So, so be careful, I guess, and what I'm saying, if you do make a mistake, there's always that option of going back over it and correcting later, but, you know, getting it sort of right the first time is going to save you a lot of time. All right, I'm still using the brush for the detail here. I'm going to switch to the felt pen. Uh, towards the end to really try to bring out the rest of the cross hatching and we'll talk a little bit about that as soon as I get to it. So let's go ahead and try to finish up this portion of Batman's face getting everything in line so we have the lines that we need and the shadow that we need. Blocking this out, Jack Kirby was a master at doing this. Um, I'm absolutely not a master at it but I'm learning. And that's what you at home should look at this as. This is your opportunity to learn too. You're, you're trying out something maybe you're a little uncomfortable with, um, but that's how you get better at something. You continue to work at it. And, and, and whether your interest is in sports or let's say music or film or, or whatever it is that you enjoy doing, um, you know, try to put more time towards it. When I go to schools and I talk to students in schools, I always mention, I ask who, you know, who in the class likes to play video games. And a lot of hands go up, right? And video games are great. There's nothing wrong with it. Well, the reason I ask that, though, is, you know, if, if you take a little bit of time out of doing maybe some things that you do as a hobby for fun um, and apply it towards maybe something that you're interested in that you're, you're not as, um, um, maybe you're not, you don't feel you're as good at or you want to get better at, then you will eventually get better at it. I hope to one day be a good artist. <laughs> I don't think I am a good artist, but, you know, Artists are usually their own worst critics, and that's very true in my case. I know that much. So what I'm doing now is going back over it, and I'm looking at these areas that still need shadow. Hair is very difficult to pull off with shadowing, but if you approach it in a sort of a light way and don't think about it too much, you can uh, pull it off. Robin's hair has various lines going up into um, the, the top part of his hair here, which is, looks like it's um, you know kind of... Uh, it's, it's uh, raised up off his head. So we want to have the shadows underneath some portions of the hair. So we're going to draw most of the shadows closer to his face and leaving less lines towards the back of his, back of his head. Um, these, these hairs here will be actually coming off of his head a little bit. So hopefully we can get that effect going. Um, also at the top here we have some hairs going off to the side. So I want to pull that out too a little bit. Um, whenever you're going over with a brush, you want to be careful to not absorb too much um, ink because when you go over top of your drawing with the brush, you can actually drop ink off of your brush onto the, onto the canvas, which can lead to a giant mess. 
Um, so be careful with that as well. Um, I think really looking at the Batman on this side here, looking at Batman, um, I think it actually looks pretty good, pretty similar to what's on the, um, the example I have below. I'll go ahead and put the bat symbol in. I didn't draw this so with pencil first, so this is going to be a little tricky. Using a brush like I'm doing right now to uh, make lines, you actually, as you, as you start to lay down the lines, you're, you're twisting the brush. So I'm twisting the handle of the brush a little bit. I've actually clipped off the end of this, um, this brush handle. It used to be a lot longer. I clipped it off for two reasons. Number one, having a smaller handle gives me more control, or at least it feels like it does. And then on top of that, too, it fits nice in my carry case. <laughs> so those two reasons, I clipped it off. So we're going to go ahead and add now the bat symbol on his chest. This turn, it's turning out okay. Um, if I had pencil this in earlier, it may have worked a little better. Now you can see I'm pulling a lot of ink onto my brush, and I'm putting it in there, and it's absorbing it really, really quickly. But that's okay because we're almost to the point where we're starting to use the nib pens which is what we'll carry out and end the tutorial with. Um, if you want examples on inking at home, and let's say you haven't uh, drawn something, go online, go to YouTube, and search for um, uh, ink tutorials. And what you'll have is a large range of options on different types of videos you can watch to, um, to see how ink's applied, and, and you can even sketch something out there at home and do it as well, okay? All right, now. We have somewhat of a Batman and somewhat of a Robin. And with that in mind now, what we're going to do is lay our brush aside and we're going to pull up our, our nib pen. And this is the, um, um, the small tipped nib so um, or felt tip marker. And what we'll use with this is to go back up and actually do some cross hatching. Cross hatching works where you make lines going parallel to one another like this. And then you go back on top and you cross over almost like you're making X's, okay? This is cross hatching. The tighter you make these lines together, so if I did these really, really close together like this, and then went back over with lines really, really close together like that, this almost looks like just one solid dark surface, but it's not, okay? And that's the effect that we want. So we're going over to the shoulder here, and we're gonna actually start doing some cross hatching. And so we're making these parallel lines going down, and then we've got to go back up. Now you can actually start to bend these lines a little bit to give the effect of, of there's a, a shape of, of um, the curvature of, of something. So when you bend the lines when you go to cross hatching, you're actually able to show curvature of, of any object you're drawing. And you notice how I've bent these, they're, they're rounded coming out, so it gives the look that this is bending. I want to go back to the section above his brow here. Um, his eyebrow because this needs work too. So we're going to go back in and actually start to darken in more of these areas. This is your touch-up work. This is where you can go in and really hopefully make things pop out well. You know, pull things together a little bit more and um, hopefully your drawing starts to come together. Right here going up the neck is an area that I'd like to also put some cross hatching. So I'm going to pull these lines out coming up this way. And I'm going to go back over, going the opposite direction. This is an effect that you can, you can give this effect in, in most any pen and ink drawings that you try to, try to accomplish or tackle. Um, I love the look of cross-hatching. Edward Gorey is an artist that we focused on in a war art workshop in the past. He, he does all cross-hatching work, and his work is just amazing. Connecting this now to the solid black surf, um, surface and objects that we've applied here. And when I say objects, I mean those blocks that you saw earlier. That's, that's the goal. So we don't want this to look like these cross hatchings are sort of just floating out in, in space somewhere on our drawing. We want them to seem like they're coming out from the darkened area that's already there. Okay. He has a couple of lines here on his chest coming down. So add those in. And then, of course, the neck, too, going up this way where the light is coming in. Now you notice that all the cross hatching that I've done has been on the right side of whatever it is we're looking at. For the exception of over here on the cape part that's going over his back. The reason for that light is coming in from this direction. Okay, so you want to keep all your shadows in the appropriate side um, that is opposite to where your light is coming in. Okay, 
It's real important to think about that while you're drawing so that you don't make the mistake of adding a shadow where light should be coming in, okay? And that's all we're doing now is just going around the borders of these solid blacks that we've done and we're adding in a little more of the detail, okay? Um, also, the top here, we can do a little bit more work going across his, um, his mask, the top of the head, just going towards the top of the head, and then adding some more cross hatching like that. If you go around most of the border shapes that you've created, whenever you darken in something, you'll get that effect and it'll look really nice, okay? We'll go over to Robin for a second too. Robin actually has more lines coming up the forehead. My brush tip is pretty, pretty um, thick that I use for this tutorial. So what I want to do is use the felt tip and take advantage of the thin, small tip that this has in order to create these small lines that are coming off of Robin's forehead. Also down on the side of his neck and then also for his uniform as well. These lines couldn't be accomplished with the brush, so pay attention to the size of the brush that you use. Let's say you want to go purchase some art supplies and you have some things in mind that you'd like to do with those, such as inking. Um, please take my suggestion of getting very, very small tip brushes and make sure that they're rounded brushes as well. If they're chiseled or if they're square or if they're other shapes than round, you're going to have a really hard time pulling off some of these details. Um, a, lot of, a lot of ink in today's workshop and a lot of applying that ink in ways that we see shadow making lines. So if you look at Batman's um, figure here, all of this is darkened in, but even just leaving the white here around the top of his uh, eyebrow and uh, also down the nose and chin, this, if, this drawing seems that we can see that there's, that there's more to it in this area that we can't see, right? And that's the main goal with ink is to make things appear um, even if they're, you can't see them. You can imagine that there's more to his face going and continuing with the lines we can see. That's the goal with ink, okay? Jack Kirby's a master at it, but you and I are learning and we'll continue to learn together um, here on the art workshop. So I really appreciate you tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Ink is, is a hard medium to, to, to get used to, but if you get the right tools and you have things to uh, help out if you mess up, uh, you should have a lot of fun and, and, and learning and getting the hang of it. So thanks again for tuning in. Thanks to Pike TV for making this uh, show available to you. And until next time, I'm Chris Epling, and keep drawing.